The next moment we're in the orchard outside Juliet's house, below her balcony, and Romeo musing to himself his feelings about Juliet and the impossibility of his love for her. And then Juliet's a, a, a appearance on the balcony in her timid approach and the first very tentative exchanges of love and expression of love. And the fascinating thing about this is that Berlioz does it without any singers. The singers are woven into the texture of the orchestra, but nobody actually sings. Yes, you can hear Romeo's voice in the tenors of the orchestra, in the, in the cellos and in the violas, and you can hear Juliet in the woodwind instruments, the, 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 the cor anglais and, and the flute, and the oboe to some extent. But it's all written without the benefit of voices. And the compositional process that's, in, that's invoked and, 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 and used in that um, context is a fascination in itself, because it seems that what he may have done was to start by writing the, the voices, the, the, the words, in French, of course, into the orchestral texture, as though singers were singing, as in an opera. And then he eliminated the actual voices themselves and just left the orchest orchestra so that you've got, as it were, the essence of poetic diction and dramatic conversation and exchange in its, in its distilled form. There doesn't seem any deprivation of a, a lack of singing when one listens to a purely orchestral piece like this. The essence of the thing is already there, and when the cellos play a recitative, as it were, which represents Romeo expressing his absolutely impossibly burning, ardent love for Ju Juliet, which can never be consummated, it seems to have even greater poignancy by the fact that it doesn't have the distraction of the human voice. 